you've likely seen them overhead. Old steel feats of engineering from decades gone by. They cut through the clouds with that familiar heavy sound of combustion whipping around a propeller. They are symbols of Canada's military past. And this is where they live, in Hamilton, at the Canadian War Plane Heritage Museum. The planes here are part of one of the world's greatest collections of war aircraft, and the finest in Canada. I'm Alex Mabel, and this is Hometown Tourist. Opened in 1972, the Canadian Warplane Heritage Museum and its vintage aircrafts have become one of the most visited attractions in Hamilton. One step inside here and it's easy to see why people have been coming here for years. I mean, a lot of these planes are still operational and this one was up in the air recently. The oil, still fresh. I mean, I can't remember the last time I've been able to smell a museum. I have to admit, I don't know a whole lot about planes. Thankfully, the Warplane Museum has a platoon of volunteers that offer intimate guided tours, providing details about how the museum started and what maneuvers each and every plane is capable of doing. I'm pleased to be joined by Bill McBride. He's a pilot and a volunteer here at the Canadian Warplane Heritage Museum. Uh, Bill, you've been a volunteer here for decades now. Um, what, what's intriguing about this museum? Well, that's a very good question. It, I think it impacts different pe people differently. Mm -hmm. uh, each person comes out and sees what they see. The intriguing thing about this museum probably is the fact the airplanes fly. Right. That you can go to any one of a number of wonderful museums around Canada, the one in Ottawa, some out west, but what you see is airplanes sitting on the ground. You see them up close, but you don't see them in their element. Here, you see the airplanes in their element in that most of the airplanes that we have actually fly. You can see them fly, that's right. where they need to be. But it's not just about the planes. The idea is that to preserve the memory of the men and women, mm -hmm. the people who were involved with building the airplanes and the factories that were set up around Canada mm -hmm. as part of the British Commonwealth Air Training Plan during the war, the young men who were trained to fly in these airplanes, mm -hmm. like this harbor behind us, which was the fighter pilot's training airplane. And uh, then, of course, went on to operations and flew the airplanes in combat conditions. Being amongst all these planes, I can't help but feel like a young kid again. My mind is filled with imaginations of what it would have been like to fly one of these steel birds during the war. And I can't help but think that this feeling would have been what the founders had hoped guests would feel when they first opened the museum. Now, Bill, this is the fairy firefly, and it, and it represents uh, a, a large part of how this museum came about. Absolutely. Well, the interesting thing about it is it's not Air Force. This is a Navy airplane. This is an airplane, as you can see by the folding wings and the tail hook, that was flown by the Royal Canadian Navy from off the aircraft carrier Magnificent. And it was the very first plane bought by the organization. To get the engine going, they had to throw a truck inner tube over the propeller, tie a rope to it, the other end to a truck, drive away, turn the propeller, and off she went. That's how you had to start it. But they managed to get it flying, and they brought it up to Toronto uh, in about 1970, and they, they started restoring it. It took a couple of years. They got it restored and repainted, and then they started flying it in air shows. And that's how the museum started. One airplane started up by a truck in or two. Today, the collection has grown from one to well over 40 planes, many of which guests can get up close and touch, including getting into several of the plane's cockpits. Perhaps the most prized piece in the collection is the Avro Lancaster bomber, one of just two airworthy Lancasters left in the world. The thing about the Lancaster is that while it was designed and built in great numbers in the United Kingdom, that over 400, almost 450 Lancasters were built just down the road by Victory Aircraft uh, in Toronto, what is now Malton Airport, or yeah. Toronto International Airport. Right. It was then Malton, 
and uh, they were built there. KB 700 was the very first Lancaster that was built in Canada and sent off to the United Kingdom. The Lancaster, well, it was a key weapon during the Second World War. Well, we're all familiar with the famous B-17 Flying Fortress that was the mainstay airplane of the uh, United States Army Air Corps uh, when they were doing their daylight bombing missions over Germany in mass numbers. Uh, this is the airplane that was flown by the Royal Air Force at night in their bombing campaign. The difference between the two airplanes is this, and the Americans, God bless them, don't like to hear this. What the what the B-17 did in the daytime, this did at night, but it did it faster, it flew higher, it went, carried a much bigger bomb load. It was far more effective, and it was a better airplane to fly. It's not as pretty, <laughs> but it really did the job. This Lancaster, this plane, um, these still hold a, a special place in the hearts of, of, of people that remember them and, and are war buffs. Well, as we all know, this airplane spent some time in England in the, uh, the summer of 2014. And um, the British people welcomed it beyond anything that we could have imagined. Mm -hmm. um, I'm told that you could not buy a Canadian flag in England because they were all sold out. And the guys would drive down the street and there were Canadian flags everywhere. And this airplane was so incredibly well received. And they really hated after seven weeks that the airplane came back to Canada. They, they really loved it. It means so much to them over there. And it means a lot to us over here, too. The museum also has a fantastic collection of jets. However, these aircraft rarely see time in the sky because of the cost of maintaining and fueling them. Volunteers take great pride in preserving the aircraft. Hundreds of hours of research and mechanical work goes into keeping the planes air ready. From building custom-made parts in the shop to checking and rechecking components are in working order, the team of volunteers here make sure the planes are in pristine shape to provide the best experience for guests. Looking at all these planes makes me wonder how good of a pilot I might be. Well, the museum's got that covered too. Guests can also test their abilities in one of the flight simulators and fly one of several planes and even take a tour over Hamilton. While the kids and those who are young at heart earn their wings on the flight simulator, history junkies can get their fill taking in several detailed World War II displays. The museum is dedicated to recognizing the warplanes and the pilots who fought in the war, but these exhibits provide guests with a broader understanding of the role they played in supporting ally missions. Guests can get a sense of the conditions pilots would have endured, the types of flight suits and helmets they would have worn, and the radio equipment that was essential to coordinating and monitoring flights. And one of the ways the museum is able to keep the planes operational is through donation bins and through memberships. One of the perks is to come here as many times in a year as you want. And that's a good thing because there's always something to see here. And if you'd like to take something home with you, how about a model plane? Another added benefit of being a member is having the unique and rare opportunity to go up in one of these planes like the legendary Lancaster. The museum offers members flights on board 12 of its planes. In addition to the cost of membership, would-be aviators can book a flight from as low as $60 to $2,600. For a ride in this de Havilland chipmunk, just 180 bucks. If going up in a plane is not on your bucket list, guests can rest their feet here in the theater where they can watch one of several movies, including Captain of the Clouds, starring Billy Bishop. Well, I've had a lot of fun here, Bill. Thank you very much for showing me around the museum and teaching me a little bit more about the planes here. Well, you're very welcome. Come back anytime. You're always welcome here. Will do. And to you viewers out there, if you'd like to come and learn a little bit more about Canada's aviation military history, I highly recommend it. Now, I'm going to go hop on one of those tours over there.